Thank you for joining us today. My name is Satira de Oliveira from the Stem Cell Transplant Program and the Cellular Therapies Program at the Department of Pediatrics at UCLA. At any moment during the webinar, please ask questions using Twitter hashtag UCLAMDChat or comment on Facebook. Our goals in this webinar are to discuss CAR T-cell therapy, so the indications, plan of care, side effects, risks and benefits. What I want is to have this webinar as a resource for uh, discussing with your physicians any treatment options. In specific, what we are going to discuss is about cancer immunotherapy concept and the concept of cellular therapy. We are going to discuss about CAR T-cell therapy and how it works. And we are going to go over indi the indications for CAR T-cell therapy, car therapies, in particular for pediatric patients, and also go over the complications uh, that can occur during the treatment. So first, discussing about the concept of cancer immunotherapy. The idea is when um, the immune system uh, fails to hold up the cancer cells, that's when the, the cancer cells arise. And the idea of using the person's own immune system to fight cancer has been long-standing, but only more recently we were able to make use of it and, and obtain good results. Um, and because the idea is the cancer cells were already able to trick and escape the immune system, one way to treat is either stimulating the immune system to track and destroy the cancer, for example using cancer vaccines, or the other way is to add immune system components to enable the tracking and the killing of cancer cells. And examples of this would be using antibodies for treatment of cancer or using cellular therapy. So what is cellular therapy? The idea is for cellular therapy we are going to use whole living cells for the treatment of cancer. These cells can be from the patient's own cells or from some other individual. And classically, one example of this that has been in use for decades is the bone marrow transplant. So the idea is instead of a drug or a medicine, the drug is actually these living cells. And they are going to be given to a patient, but it, to develop this treatment, this is personalized. And as you can imagine, you, can, uh, you have to make them, so it will take time, and we are going to discuss about this later. The other thing is, if you have the patient's own cells to treat the cancer, then the risk of complications hopefully is less, and that's what we have seen uh, as the studies come along. The other idea is, because these are living whole cells, these cells will proliferate, will multiply, and live long in the patient's body. And hopefully then, the effects on the disease will be long-term, hopefully lifelong. This is why cancer uh, cellular therapies for cancer it, they are so promising and a lot of research has been uh, invested on this so now talking about acute lymphoblastic leukemia that is one of the indications for CAR T cell therapy um, here in this graph what we have is the chances of survival and the top would be 100 percent so what you can see is over the 60s the chances of a child surviving leukemia were about 10 to 20 percent. But as the studies got refined and optimized, the chances of surviving leukemia were uh, increased to the point that nowadays we actually have about 90 percent of chances of a child of leukemia surviving using chemotherapy alone. So there's no need for bone marrow transplant or cellular therapies. And along these studies, the other notion we learned is if there's any residual cell, and we, can, we even call minimal residual disease, if there's any leftover cells in the body of the patient, then the chances of surviving, they are actually lower, as you can see here in the blue area, where then if few cells were still detectable in the patient's body, so then the chances of the leukemia coming back are higher. So, Considering then um, both ALL leukemia and also non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in the pediatric population, both of them have a similar uh, behavior using chemotherapy alone. It is that about 
90% of these patients will be cured using chemotherapy alone. But that means about 200 to 300 kids uh, with ALL and also about 100 uh, patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, they won't be able to be cured with chemotherapy and something else needs to be in place to help these patients. And for those patients, actually, it's less of a flip of a coin of a chance of being uh, successful on treating and fighting their diseases. The chances of surviving are about only 20 to 40 percent. Because of that, then new approaches had to come in, and that's when then immunotherapies and cellular therapies came into place. Chimeric antigen receptor, or CAR, it is a man-made molecule. It is a, a, a creation that I'm going to show on the next slide that enables the cells to track and destroy cancer. They are, uh, the CAR molecules are given by genetic engineering, so there is a virus that goes into the cells and delivers the CAR into every cell. And the idea is then the CAR molecules will be expressed on the surface of the T cell or T lymphocytes. These are the most important cells of the immune system as they are the most specific and they are able to proliferate and orchestrate the whole immune response. So the, here's a, here is a, a diagram. So you have the T cells that will then suffer the gene modification with the virus. And then in the laboratory, they will start already showing on their surface the molecules of the car and in culture in the laboratory they will be multiplied to have a high number of cells as these cells are given to the patients based on weight and as here there's a picture of all the the car on the surface of the cells each of these green dots is a group of the car molecules on the surface of the cells so the idea uh, that was um, uh, uh, conceived was that in the molecule of CAR, it joins a po recognition portion of the monoclonal antibodies and then also an activating portion uh, that works inside the T cells. So then every time the T cell will find the target, then it will get activated and right away kill the target. And uh, the target that was um, chosen for that is the molecule called CD19. CD19 is expressed on many of the lymphomas and leukemias, and it's not expressed on, on the bone marrow cells, so the, the cells that create the whole uh, blood and immune system. So it's not going to harm the patient other than killing only the cells that have the CD19. There are some normal cells that have CD19. These are the B cells. And it's even if someone has all the B cells wiped out of their bodies, they can still survive receiving immunoglobulins from um, um, the hospital uh, and, uh, uh, and treatments. So here is another graph then showing the development of the B cells. This is the normal development. But for each of these stages, uh, uh, there is the chance of a leukemia or a lymphoma coming up. And the CD19 is, is expressed in more, most of these phases. So that is why picking the CD19 as the target was uh, very uh, uh, valuable to, to try to treat all these cancers. So in, this is, a, a, in, in other words, to explain how it works. So the, here is the T cell. And this one has already been modified to carry the car on their surface. And this is uh, a, an example of a cancer cell that has the CD19. So the T cell having the CAR will find the CD19 on the surface of the cell and will bind to it. And the binding to the cancer cell will activate a signal that will transform the cell in a cell that is able to kill the cancer cell. And that way then the cancer cell will die, but not only that, that activating signal will also make the T cell to proliferate. So these T cells will go around and actually increase the numbers and continue to be activated to kill the cancer. So this is why the cancer, the, the CAR T cells are also called serial killers, because once they are in, they will proliferate and hopefully they will be not only killing, but also uh, surveilling the whole body to prevent any of the leukemia or lymphoma cells to come back. And this is indeed a breakthrough therapy. And the most enthusiastic in the field actually were even thinking that CAR T cell therapy could cure cancer without chemotherapy.
The initial studies were done about a decade ago, and uh, they started using different leukemias, but little by little, they actually were most successful on treating um, the, a particular type of lymphoma that we are going to uh, discuss, and also ALL leukemia. And the first child considered cured by CAR T cell therapy of her ALL was then published in 2012. So let's go over the indications for CAR T cell therapy in pediatric patients. So as we discussed, ALL leukemia is one indication. And the way FDA has approved the treatment, it's for patients up to 25 years of age with this particular type of ALL, that is the cells that carry the CD19 positive, so B cell precursor, ALL. But it, because most of these patients will be cured with chemotherapy alone, the, the, the only patients that have the indication to receive CAR T cell therapy will be the patients for which the cancer is refractory to chemotherapy or it has come back, or in another word, relapsed, about twice. So after finishing chemotherapy, after finishing their treatments, the cancer has come back. Another indication for CAR T cell therapy, as we discussed, is the non-Hodgkin lymphoma called diffuse large B cell. And the FDA approval for this was actually put up uh, for patients 18 years of age or older. So the FDA approval, it doesn't uh, uh, cover all the pediatric population. And similar to the previous indication, it's only for refractory cancer or a patient's second relapse or later. If a patient has received a bone marrow transplant for their disease, you actually need to wait at least 100 days from the transplant, as then the immune system is, is working better and you can actually retrieve the T cells for the treatment. And as the treatment needs the T cells to have the, the genetic modification, um, the doctors will check in the blood tests to, to, have, to ensure that there, there are T cells detectable in the blood and the other thing is for the whole CAR T cell therapy to work and actually the patient be um, receiving the indication for it, um, the, the kidney, the lungs, the heart, they need to be working well because we're, as we're going to discuss, there's a, there are a lot of um, uh, side effects that can be life-threatening. So we've we got to make sure the patient is, is strong enough to resist all these complications. So here now going over how CAR T cell therapy is made. So first the doctor will then um, uh, make the, the referral to UCLA, will uh, have the indication and the contact will be made. UCLA will then go over as this is a FDA approved treatment, uh, the medical insurance coverage should cover, should pay for the whole treatment. And, and this will be then assessed by UCLA together with the insurance companies and then the cells will be collected. The collection of the cells is similar to a dialysis machine. It's a big machine that will then filter the T cells out of the blood and return the cells to the patient through uh, a central venous line. And these cells will then be sent to the laboratory of the company um, to, to have the genetic engineering to then receive the car over the surface of the T cells. This process can take about two to three weeks, but some patients actually need it up to two months. So if it takes that long, the patient may need to receive some chemotherapy to be able to wait for the CAR T cells to be ready. Otherwise, the cancer may uh, explode and then there's no chance for the CAR T therapy to work. And um, when the product is ready and the quality control has been ensured that these cells are useful and will help the patient, then the patient will be brought in for admission to the hospital to receive chemotherapy. For all the studies now, we know that chemotherapy is needed for the CAR T, therapy to, CAR -T cell therapy to work. And this is because the chemotherapy will open space in the patient's body to allow the CAR modified T cells to take place and go wherever we need them to go. The chemotherapy takes about four days. There's one day of rest for the drugs to uh, be excreted from the patient's body and then the CAR T cells can be infused through the central line. And after that, then the main treatment is actually the management of the side effects that we are going to discuss later. 
The minimum admission, hospital admission that may be there, it's about a week because most of the complications will happen during those first seven days. If the patient is well and about eight days nothing has happened, the patient can be sent home but with, with some precautions because complications may still come up all the way up to the end of the first month. So now talking about the two FDA approved products that are um, in available for, for a CAR T cell therapy. One of them is the Tizagen Lac Low Cell, brand name is uh, Kim Raya. So this was the first CAR T cell therapy approved by FDA and the approval for this product was exactly for ALL leukemia and we have discussed before, it's for patients up to 25 years of age with the B precursor ALL. And the results so far that we have known for the patients be, who were treated with this during the, the, all the studies that have uh, taken place is that the overall remission rate that it, it is that the cells disappeared with the use, the, 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 the cancer cells disappeared with the use of the CAR T cells was about 81% at three months after the treatment. And for these patients, um, about 73% of them did not have a relapse by six months. It did go down by a year after the treatment. It was only half of the patients. But you can remember this is different from uh, chemotherapy alone that would only be about 20 to 40 percent. And, and even better, the survival at 6 or uh, and 12 months after the use of Chemraya for ALL leukemia were 89% and 76% respectively. So way higher than what we had for the 20 uh, to 40%. And the most important thing is the CAR modified T cells were found not only in the blood but in the bone marrow where the leukemia actually resides and also in cerebrospinal fluid. So they went, they were able to go into the brain and search and destroy any leukemia cells that were there. Now talking about the second product FDA approved for CAR T cell therapy. The name is a very long name, is Axicabtagene Cellulose Cell or AxiCell. The brand name is uh, Yascarta. This was the second uh, product approved for CAR T cell therapy and the indication of this product was essentially for the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. So remember, the patients 18 years of age or older with diffuse large B cell lymphoma, refractory or in second or later relapse. And here there are some graphs about um, the response. So here, the, the, what we are showing here is percentage of response. So in blue, we have the objective response. So patients who had any decrease on their lymphomas um, after the, the CAR T cell therapy, you, you can see here that was, uh, it's stabilized in about 50%. Patients who had complete disappearance of the cancer cells, so complete response, it was achieved in about 70% um, and partial response it was little. But the main uh, um, notion from this graph is that actually in about three months after treatment we should already have an idea if the treatment is working or not. And here is a graph about overall survival, so it stabilized about 70% uh, to 60 percent and again it, this is in comparison to 20 to 40 percent that we had with only using chemotherapy and for lymphoma sometimes radiation and surgery. Um, so the most common side effect of CAR T cell therapy is uh, it's called cytokine release syndrome and this uh, happens in about 80% of the patients and some doctors even say that if cy cytokine release syndrome or CRS doesn't happen that may mean that the CAR T cells are not active to kill cancer and this is because what happens is this is a reflection of the T cells getting activated and searching and destroying the cancer so the patients who have fevers they can have a fast heart rate then have low blood pressure and they will feel sick. Some of these patients they can get very sick to the point that they need intensive care and some of the patients can even die of this and uh, about 50% of the patients will develop severe CRS. So this is why 
CAR T cell therapy, it, it needs a, a full approach and of a well-trained and skilled team, and that will include even intensive care, because as you can see, a lot of patients may need intensive care to manage their uh, complications. Um, the medium time to start the, the CRS was about three days, but it couldn't happen even about 22 days after the infusion of the cells. And the medium time for resolution could be as fast as a week, but it could take up to 36 days. So you can imagine, actually, when a patient comes in for CAR T cell therapy, we are not exactly how Sure, uh, very sure how, how long the patient will stay in the hospital and what will depend uh, what will dictate the patient leaving the hospital is being able to to uh, go over all of this and recover well another uh, very um, uh, concerning uh, complication or side effect of the CAR T cell therapy are the neurological toxicities and, and this can even be severe life-threatening um, and for example a patient can have uh, blindness, coma, and seizures, and, and, and a patient can die of this. Um, in pediatric and adult patients treated with CAR T cell therapy, the neurological toxicities were seen in about 44 to 65 percent of the patients. So you can, you can see it's about half or even more of the patients who have neurological complications. So this is why um, these patients, can, they, they need uh, a full and very uh, careful uh, approach to, to make sure they, they, the, all these side effects are uh, promptly detected and taken care of. Severe neurological toxicities, as I said, uh, blindness, coma, and seizures were seen in about 20% of the patients. And this is why then the whole team needs to know about these complications and the families and the patients need to know about this so they can be diagnosed in time and be managed, managed successfully. So this is um, um, uh, an example of that. So safety precautions. Every patient, even after discharge, what they have, they, they will have a, a, a patient wallet card to remind them and so they, they can know about all the complications, all the, 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 the symptoms and, and signs of these complications so they can educate themselves, they can educate the families, they can educate their own doctors so it, it can, all these complications can be diagnosed in time. And not only that, if when a patient is discharged the idea is these patients need to be close to the center where they receive the CAR T cell therapy because that's where they can be uh, taking proper care. So the idea is when a patient is discharged from the hospital, remember the complications may still remain up to a month after receiving the cells. So the idea is these patients need to stay within two hours from the hospital. Here at UCLA we actually uh, have made a, a, a deal that then the patients will be um, housed in a, in a hospital that is actually two blocks from the hospital. So that, that, uh, that way we can have the patients prompted, promptly back to the hospital if need to be. Um, so, as I said, CAR T cell therapy is available at UCLA, and UCLA was part of the, all the clinical trials that were first in human for CAR T cell therapy. So, so we, we have seen the side effects, we know how to give these cells and how to treat the patients. So, finally, we have here our take-home messages. So, when we talk about CAR T cell therapy, um, this is a really breakthrough therapy that is able to treat and hopefully cure um, a chemotherapy resistant cancer. Um, but it has specific FDA approved indications. And uh, the idea is FDA approval means a treatment that it, uh, your insurance will cover and the, the, the studies have valid, been validated to uh, actually offer opportunity to at, at least uh, improve the, the state of the patients and, and hopefully to cure the patients. Anything else uh, that is not FDA approved, then it would be considered research. And we do have those uh, clinical trials open at UCLA, but then it, it, it varies from, from disease to disease and the, because they are stu studies, uh, the results cannot be assured. It, the CAR T cell therapy involves significant risk of complications and, and that can include death. And that is why it, it requires a well-trained, skilled, and multidisciplinary team. And that, that, that's what we have here available at UCLA. So now let's go over some of the questions. Um, and please feel free to continue sending questions while we still have some minutes uh, left for the webinar. 
So here, the first question we have here is, what are the chances of surviving cancer with CAR T cell uh, and benefits greater than risks? So as I hopefully were able to, to was able to show you, uh, you the the clear indications, uh, the very specific indications, essentially it's to uh, make sure the benefits, they, they, they go over the risks. Um, there, as I said, just chemotherapy could cure a, a child with ALL leukemia. And there are, even if one uh, line of chemotherapy doesn't work, there's still at least one or two or even three other ways that you could actually treat a child with ALL leukemia before you, act, you can even uh, consider CAR T cell therapy. So that is why um, uh, it, it really uh, matters as patient by patient situation to really uh, uh, carefully assess the indication for CAR T cell therapy. Uh, the, Right now, as I told you, we have only about a decade of treating patients with CAR T cell therapy. So we still don't know for the long run if, if the CAR T cell therapy will really make sure the cancer will never come back. What the way we see nowadays is actually um, that the CAR, -T cell, the CAR T cell therapy offers a way to lead the patient to remission in cases that chemotherapy or whatever we had available before couldn't do. Um, there's still a lot of discussion to what to do after a patient achieves a remission after CAR T cell therapy because as you saw as time passes it seems the, the T cells that were modified by CAR may not still be there and then the cancer has a chance of coming back. So some centers even suggest that the patients should go to receive a full bone marrow transplant after receiving the CAR T cell. So this is something that is still to discuss. But nowadays, um, just the fact that um, you, you can actually take a patient to full remission with CAR T cell therapy is already a big victory. So um, the, the second question here is how is immunotherapy different from, from uh, the, the other treatments um, and, and other ways to boost the immune system? Um, so uh, as example here, mindfulness, diet, and, and, and um, health supplements. The way immunotherapy has been approved for cancer treatment, it's actually something way more intensive and way more specific. The idea is um, when the cancer is up and actually growing inside a patient's body, it has already found a way to trick the immune system and to escape. So even if the person has a strong immune system, the cancer is already building up. So the immune system needs an extra boost so the extra boost is exactly what these immunotherapies have been approved by FDA to, to treat. It's actually so intense that you have side effects like we, we discussed, the CRS. But the, this way, it, it, it really goes over the hump and destroys the cancer in a matter of weeks, as, you, as we discussed. So that is the idea that this is, would be way more intense and way more successful than just um, going um, at, at a slower pace with uh, um, uh, vitamins or, or uh, nutrition that perhaps actually way, may be way more successful before the cancer comes in. So um, all these approaches would be better for cancer prevention, but not exactly for cancer treatment. The third question here is, can cancer uh, CAR T cell therapy uh, be used as first line treatment instead of chemotherapy? So the concern is at least for what we have nowadays, the, the, the risk of having complications is too high to actually bring a patient without any chemotherapy already straight to, for CAR T cell therapy. As we discussed, especially for pediatric ALL, the chances of cure are, are so high with just using chemotherapy that it's not justifiable to uh, put a child at risk to use um, CAR T cell therapy as first line. So the idea is it's better to save CAR T cell therapy as a, 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 a last resort if it really everything else didn't work because the chemotherapy the way we have nowadays refined and optimized has decreased the chance of complications, has decreased the chances of late uh, in life uh, of uh, side effects and, and having um, complications. So that is why the idea that right now for 
mostly for, for, for most of the patients, they won't need CAR T cells. And, and the idea is uh, chemotherapy alone is, will be successful to treat pediatric ALL and pediatric diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Can CAR T cell therapy be given without chemotherapy? Um, I didn't go in detail, uh, but there was a time patients would receive uh, CAR T cell therapy without chemotherapy. And what has happened is those CAR modified T cells wouldn't last very long and then the cancer would come back. So the idea is giving chemotherapy to those patients increases the chances of the CAR T cells to stay in the body and to keep tracking and destroying and, and surveilling over the cancer to prevent it to come back. So nowadays uh, for any patient receiving CAR T cell therapy, the idea is they do need those four days of chemotherapy. And how different is CAR T cell therapy from bone marrow transplant? So CAR T cell therapy, we use the patient's own cells. We, through genetic engineering, we can use the patient's own T cells, and that way, hopefully, even though with all those complications, decrease the chances of a lifelong complications, as opposed to the bone marrow transplant, in which we do need to give cells from a different individual to a patient, because that way the different immune system would actually track and destroy the, the cancer cells uh, from the patient's body. But the problem is those cells, they may fight the, the new body and, and may uh, cause complications uh, that that we call a graft versus host disease. Um, I think that's all for our questions today. Uh, thank you for joining us. Bye.